Ladies and gentlemen, after having recently penetrated the Flight Factor A350, I thought I'd give you guys a little startup tutorial. I'm sure there's many of you out there who can do it better than me, but uh, for now we'll go ahead and do our startup tutorial, how I think it is supposed to be done, and what I've been found out and what I've taught, worked out. Let's go ahead and hop in, in the flight deck. You'll probably be in this position. I saved myself some custom camera, custom camera views. You can find out how to do that using my custom camera video uh, tutorial thing I made. So go ahead, you can find that through there, but uh, that is the gist. Okay, first thing you want to do, on the overhead, zooming in, we're going to click bat 1, and bat 2. We're then going to set these to the middle position, and we can hear all the fans firing up there. Next thing, immediately, that we want to do is want to head to ground service on our little tab here. Doors and hatches, click load config, all the doors open up. See them opening up there? Click ground equipment, uh, get rid of that, click auto config, and it will automatically do that. You then want to click on the ground power units here, and here. that's the most important thing, because now we have our external power, so we click 1 and 2, and the external powers boot up, which now gives us this page, so we're just going to click this, we fix it so we've got the checklist closest to us. So. This checklist runs it through with what you do. So you click on a page, and as you do stuff, it automatically ticks it for you. So you can click once here to tick. So some things need to be ticked, which is ones with the little boxes. Some things don't, and they will just do as you do them. So emergency one and two. So battery emergency one and two are here and here. We click them. It's now completed the rest of it. Electrical power up. We can confirm. That's what we've done. Ecam auto mode. We can check. So NSS to data. So that is these three up here. Next one is the cooling and cabin fans, which are up here. We click them. And we're just working through this checklist. Can be a little bit confusing though, the first sort of thing. So all I'm doing is now starting the APU. Start. Oh. Start. There we go. And the next thing I want to do is I want to get a rough flight plan in. Whilst we wait for that APU just to power up. So we're going to reflick this. We now have the FMS. I'm not going to really do a massive tutorial on this, it's pretty basic, so I'm going from Gatwick today, oh, EG, KK, to, oh, why does it, sometimes you get a little bit of an issue there, we've got to click off it, and click back on it, to Manchester, my alternate I'll be diverting to Heathrow, I'll be cruising at a flight level of 180, with a cost index of 43. So you would continue to fill out the rest of that in there, but we can go back to that in a minute. So, we confirm the APU has started, so we can just quickly confirm that, and the APU is all available. Next one, RMP. So we've got to set up our radio stack. So, hop down here. I'm on 121850 for today, so we'll click here, which is that green button there to set it. We've got no sound there, so what you want to do is click down there, and then roll this up, and now we're listening to VHF1. We then want to head to our squawk page. Make sure you set in your squawk at which point you get your clearance at this point. Mine's 1200 or 2000 for today. Slave, you want to click to master. And then you want to turn it to on. Just tick through these because you've done them. And there we go. You've completed this next one. APU firelight, off. Okay, confirm. It's off. You then want to do your APU agent lights are off. They are firm. The test PB. The test PB. I've actually got... Fine, I haven't used it in a while. I don't tend to do that, it's just a test. We don't like running through tests in um, little videos. So now once you've completed them, that's your power-up ones. You've then got to click CL menu, normal procedures, and cockpit preparation. Cap and purse, we need to switch on. Oxygen for crew, on. ADs select to nav. So here we go, the ADs go nav, in the order of 1, 2, and 3. The nav light switch comes on. And we've completed that next one. We then move down further on the list. Remaining lights as required. We'll be taking the logo lights to automatic for today. The seatbelt signs and no smoking lines go on. As required. The temperature selectors are as required. Electrical DC page. We've got to check that. So we click go down here. Electrical DC. Here it is. We can check that. The batteries are sat below 60 amps. Well, we've got 5 amps, so they definitely are. The APU gen needs to now go on. 
So if we look overhead, the APU gen is up here. Click that there. We can then turn on gens 1 and 2. So the gens 1 and 2 are here and here. There's four switches in total, two for each one. The bus tie and main fuel pumps now go on. The bus tie there and the main fuel pumps are on. Maintenance panel all performed and we need to get our hydraulics on. So that's one, two, three and four. In theory, just before you filled up, you want to make sure you get your lighting. So it'll do a medium, it'll do different ones for you. When you click implement, they will then fill. For this flight up to Gatwick today, I'm taking 10,000 kilograms of fuel. I then type whatever I want into destination, click implement, and boom. The passengers take a little bit of time to load, 227 seconds or so, so I tend to do it about now. Hydraulic pumps. So we turn them on, but you'll notice it doesn't go out because you need to head to your ground hydraulic pumps and turn them on. We've now completed that page. Next one. Air data selectors. Check. The air data selectors we can confirm are checked. So we can click that. The gear lever is down. Anti-skid now needs to go on. Anti-skid is here. We flick that on. And the standby instruments are checked. The serve systems 1 and 2. So we click up here, FMS. We click serve. We then want to turn the controls. So we want to turn off on our system. So we get the serve page open. We now head down here. One, two, three, and four. These go on. We then click next. And we now are in our page. Transponder needs to go to automatic. You can't do it through here. So what you need to do is head back down to your squawk page. And you want to set it to automatic here. By clicking it to auto with the mode. You then want to take your ETS to TARA. So that's there. Norm. We then want to turn on all of these. You want to click everything here. You know, do trays for. There we go. Everything is on. The init page. It wants wants to serve. So we head back to FMS. Init, and we can just confirm everything we filled in earlier. It's just been checked. Bar reference set on both. So currently at Gawick, it's one zero one two in the pressure. I can confirm that's what it is. So the mode and range. We now want to set this to arc mode, and ten mile zoom for the initial. The pilot flying displays are on. North reference is confirmed. Speed on the Mac is confirmed. The heading track dashed altitude initial clearance. We then call for clearance at this point. Normal procedures. Before pushback and engine startup. Force pushback clearance. Check our fuel quantity and everything. We can make sure the fuel quantity passengers are loading for the next 100 seconds or so. And we can wait for them to continue up their loading. And at which point we don't want to touch anything like this. And we continue to fill in our FNC for today. I'm just going to quickly pick an aircraft, say. I'm just getting my sim brief. Give me a second. Right, there we go. So, we filled in our init page. So we now want to go to our flight plan page. Departure for today. Out of Gatwick. I'll be taking runway. Stand by. Runway 26 left. We'll be going on the Lambourne 6 mic departure. And we just click insert the proof. Scrolling down from Lambourne. I click airways as we'll be taking an airway today. We're taking the November 57 to direct to Wellin. Enter. From Wellin I'm taking the Tango 420. Direct to Trent. Tango November Tango. Entered. This is just a basic tutorial. I'll probably do a detailed one later. We then click Charlie. Runway. 2 through right is our arrival. We then select our approach, ILS. Our via. We're going via Manchester today. Because that's part of the arrival. The Dane 2 Alpha arrival. We just click temporary flight plan. And insert temporary. Our flight plan is now active. We then need to go to our fuel and load page. Now, your ZFW, your CG, if you click perf calculator up here, your cargo weight position is 19.2 for today. 19.2. Enter. Our ZFW, we can check that with our sim brief here. 174.6. 174.6. Enter. Our block fuel. We entered 100. Or 10, rather. So we've got 10 tons of fuel on board. Boom. Entered it. We then want to head to our performance page, which, of course, we have not got yet. But we'll be calculating sure. We'll be doing a flat one, so we can just set that there. 
performance calculator slaps one you can check the gradient of your departure but our cargo range out of change so you'll probably notice this i get this quite a lot so what you have to do is click unload quickly boost up your passengers in the rear and take down your passengers in the front and then click implement and now you can see 20 percent on the calculator that's much more like what we want so we then have produced a correct v1 vr and v2 so 137 137 140 with flaps 1 and a flex temper 46 so we click flex oh, flex 46 enter our fms is now confirmed we can then flick the display cycle i'll feel good joke dev w c gyms these are all in pedals are just we want to drop off the external power at this point external power is now off next we want to set up our pushback so i'm using pushback express pushback helper rather so for something like this i just quickly maneuver around our pushback saying I'll, I'll be stopping before taxi because by that point you should be able to go you click start pushback passengers have got another 183 seconds worth of loading we've just got a couple more minutes of loading passengers because we made that slight mistake of doing that too late once you've watched this video you'll probably do it earlier so you can do it through the a350 if you don't have pushback helper you can head over here you head to ground service and pushback and you can control the pushback tug from here. Um, however, I do it through there because I find that easier. So we've got a timer, we're just waiting for the timer. So we don't want to head to CL menu. Next one, we want to head to our engine start mode. So our beacon light needs to go on. And then we're gonna wait. We're gonna turn our APU bleed on, we can do that now. But we're gonna wait to complete everything else until we start the movement back. Whilst we're waiting, we got to wait for our IRS to align. As you can see, that's still not aligned. And we're going to set our initial climb altitude of 6,000 up Gatwick. I am also going to set up the first officer's displays. And to check your current IRS position, you can go to data. Or rather, sorry, I keep making the same mistake every time. Position, IRS. And we see we've got one minute worth of alias. So we click align IRS. It's aligning now on GPS position. It's got our position. So the IRS is aligning on the GPS position. Clear info at the bottom there, just gets rid of that. We're waiting for one minute worth of alignment. All these emergency waiters, we're just waiting. So the toe is connected. I did this a little bit early connecting the toe, but we can, you, if you're happy to accept this, realistically, you'd wait a bit longer for everything to be closed before you connect up everything. However, up to this point, we can just continue to do this as long as we're happy. So, he's just told us release parking brake. We're going to wait to release parking brake until not only these have aligned, but also the not only this is aligned, but uh, the passengers have finished boarding. Passengers have finished boarding. So whilst we're waiting for that to finish, what we can do is go ground service, doors and hatches, close all. Ground equipment, just you've got to de-click all of them. So we're de-clicking, we de-click everything. Everything is now driven away from the aircraft. So it's just a pushback to the left. That's exactly how we want it. And we just got to wait for this GPS IRS to align. So I'll just pause it and get you back with you in a minute. And welcome back. The IRS have now aligned. And all I'm going to do is click flick to center. So we now have this down there. And the important stuff up here. I'm going to turn off this. So we now have our start for pushback. So the IRS have aligned. So we can now release the parking brake. And allow the truck to push the aircraft back. So being cleared to start engines immediately, a little bit unrealistic, but that's not a problem. So what we're going to do is select the engine selector to start, twisting it that way, and click number one. We're now going to watch as the engine boots up, and if we just quickly click off electrical DC, it now gets the engine panel, and we can see the N3 gauges and N2 spooling up. The aircraft is now preparing itself as the engines start up, and we're getting ready to go. You see it's automatically ticked all these. And the engine one available, we can confirm once we see the exhaust temperature there spooling up massively as the engine revs. The engine spools up, it begins to spool up. And there we go, we confirm that's stable, so we can confirm. We're then going to do engine number two. Boom. Engine number two begins to spool up. Engine two available, we can just confirm that because we know we will get that. I'll start checklist. Engineering controls. So we're going to set our parking brake afterwards. What you can now do is for engine one, 
this is where I deviate from the checklist slightly, I turn on my bleeds. So that then we have stuff off the APU now being powered. I turn the cabin pressurization to automatic. And the cargo airs off. Oh, I'm sorry. There we go. Engine 2 is spooling up, completing. We're going to wait for the end of the pushback. Should be completed any minute now. We tell us to push it back about here. Ready for it to be completed. Pushback completed. So we're now going to... Norm. APU engine 2 bleeds will go on. The hot air and the bleeds go on. And the APU bleed goes off. The APU bleed generator, we've done the anti-ice, it's not a problem. Master switch goes off. The APU gen will see fault, we just click that to get rid of it. Operation complete. Set parking brake. Parking, parking brake goes on. Parking brake's now on. Ground spoilers, we're going to arm the ground spoilers, we just drag them all the way up. The flap lever, for today we have flaps 1 onto bike chest, so I will set flaps 1. Flaps 1 gets set. Pitch trim, we can confirm that's in the middle. The ECAM status is confirmed. So the ELMU. So we click all of these. And we turn out all of these ones. Open the guard, you drag down. Passenger, and then you drag up. The aircraft is now ready. This is as far as I'll be taking you guys for today. I hope you like this little tutorial. We'll be completing the next of our series shortly on the Flight Factor ABUS A350. Thanks very much for all for watching. I'll see you in a bit.